So Sweta, mm -hmm. am I saying that right? Yes, that's right. Sweta, welcome, my friend, to to what is our storytelling series, where we're yeah. featuring students across campus mm -hmm. who have experiences and stories and mm -hmm. perspectives that we want to draw out. Mm -hmm. And yeah. as a PhD student, we figured, what what better way to tell the story of what it's like to be a stu student than to show that perspective, right? Of mm -hmm. having gone through, you did grad school here, right? Yes. I and did my master's here. You did and, your master's uh, here. I'm continuing with my PhD right now. And yeah. now your PhD. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So have to tell us your story, your mm -hmm. where you're from originally, what, what your journeys look like at CSU, what your club involvement has looked like, what mm -hmm. you're studying, just kind of the general story. Yeah, um, I'm from India, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm from a southern part of India called Chennai. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my... Uh, um, I was born there, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, I I did my uh, schooling and my uh, undergrad in Chennai, and uh, I came to uh, CSU to pursue my master's mm. in electrical engineering. Uh, the field I chose to do specialization was in uh, embedded systems and microprocessors, mm. microcontrollers. Yeah. But when I came from India to the United States, there were there were uh, there was a huge gap in the educational system yeah. and in the curriculum. So yeah. the microprocessors or the controllers that I studied in India was very primitive and compared to the recent advances yeah. in the technology here. Yeah. Um, so there was a huge gap. And uh, so I had, uh, I had to learn a lot to yeah. cope up with uh, what's the recent trend and uh, to cope up with grad school here. Mm. It was one of the challenges. Um, yeah. And also the second challenge was uh, what I hoped for to do research was not available here. Mm. From the, uh, so before coming here, I saw the professor's website. Mm. I interacted with them, but I didn't know much to ask what's actually research is and yeah. what they do. So yeah. it was all new for me. Um, so uh, I, switched uh, my research focus to something mm. called parallel programming mm. um, and Pilot eventually programming. parallel programming Pilot so programming. instead of doing an application in one single computer you yeah. do that across multiple computers mm. to make it go fast oh, wow. so that's what my research is yeah, um, yeah so uh, I, I took a long time to finish my master's I took about yeah. four and a half years there were several several challenges yeah. I faced um, and uh, I thought of uh, finishing it off with a PhD because I worked hard so much for master's thesis. So I started PhD. Yeah. Um, I started uh, doing the same topic, but then I mm. switched topics. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I switched topics um, three months. All right. Before switching topics, I thought of quitting PhD. Yeah. Um, but then uh, I was working with my current advisor and uh, yeah. I had a good relationship or I found that intellectual uh, develop curiosity and uh, yeah. development when I interact with him. Yeah. So, uh, um, so uh, I switched my topics, I switched advisors and uh, yeah. so it has been uh, about two years working on my PhD uh, right now and mm. uh, I'm mostly done and I'm uh, finishing up in the next six months or seven months I'm writing up and uh, yeah this is my journey so far the that's, overview of it yeah yeah <laughs> that's incredible so you're nearing your dissertation you're yes. nearing the end of yes, your journey I've started writing my dissertation I've finished four chapters wow. two more to go and also to revise and uh, wow. write more yeah yeah that's where I am yeah. yeah and your academic journey I mean it sounds like there's been a lot of depth a lot of yeah struggles right and a lot yeah, of yeah, challenges yeah. take me there take me to what was it like when you were third year in your your master's program or what were those moments that were so challenging where mm -hmm. you, you weren't sure if you were going to continue when i did my master's i was sure i was i accepted all the challenges that came along the way because i didn't mm -hmm. know what a higher education is supposed to be yeah um so i thought okay, these are the challenges that I have to go through. So go through, go through, go through. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, but when I started my PhD and I started uh, 
venturing out to different uh, research groups and seeing how they work and how mm. different people do research, um, I figured out that research need not be the same way as what happens in one group. It differs from each group. Yeah. And I have a choice to pick the group that's mm. comfortable with my personality, with my thinking. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that that's where uh, it was a moment of... Uh, yeah. Like, oh my God, <laughs> I could have <laughs> known this before I had a choice to switch groups or pick yeah. something different. And uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, that was a struggle in my master's program. Mm. So third year into my master's, usually people who do master's with uh, research and thesis, yeah. um, they do it for three years. Mm. So uh, three years into the program, uh, I started with a topic. Mm. Uh, I finished working on the topic but uh, the, the, I didn't get any impressive results to show. It, it mm. would You would call it more like a project, yeah. but people wouldn't accept it as a thesis. Mm. Uh, so that was where I was uh, at the end of my third year. Um, and at the beginning of my fourth year, um, I, got, um, I was a teaching assistant, graduate teaching okay. assistant. Yeah, and that was a lot to uh, do because the course was intensive and I had to work more. Yeah. There were so many assignments, and uh, <laughs> the professor, the professor was really enthusiastic, and he wanted to bring new topics yeah. right into the middle of the curriculum. Mm. So when he brings new topics, I have to prepare the topic, prepare the assignment, prepare the. <laughs> so it was challenging. So I'm most sure. of the time, uh, a fourth year, the first semester of my fourth year was focused on my. Uh, um, GTA work, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I couldn't focus much on my thesis. Mm. Um, but uh, the second half of my fourth year, um, yeah, second half of my fourth year, mm -hmm. 2017, I guess, yeah, 2017, mm -hmm. that's when I started uh, a new thing. So uh, I told my professor, hey, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is it. And uh, so I went and I told them, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I did that. And whatever I did in the next uh, six or seven months mm. was only my thesis. Hmm. So what I did in the previous years were not a part of my thesis. No. So the challenging part was to understand what research is. And uh, yeah. the thing that you do may not always end up yeah. in having good results. You have to throw a lot of things and then yeah. uh, come up with a new topic that makes sense to the audience. Mm. Um, so that was the challenging part. Yeah. In my master's uh, journey. Yeah. That's fascinating. I'm just trying to picture that. <laughs> you have your thesis, you have yeah. your topic, and then you have your foundation, right? What you started your journey on. Yeah. And what I started to, was not a part of my thesis. Trying to build a bridge between those two worlds, mm -hmm. I'm sure, right? Yeah, it was a it was a big elephant you can yeah. you can imagine. And my thesis was to bite a part of that elephant. Yeah. Ended up doing that. Um yeah. I didn't um, know that before, but Eventually, I figured out, okay, this is a whole picture and the thesis doesn't have to be a small part of it and yeah. I cannot do a whole. So, yeah. Mm. That's incredible. Well, I just, I sense that you're a driven person to pursue a master's, to pursue your PhD. Clearly, you have an academic <laughs> edge. Yeah. And a desire, right? To, it was, to impact. It's interesting. Research is interesting, but yeah. I did not want to do engineering. Mm. I wanted to be a medical doctor. Yeah. Um, but in India... Uh, you have a majority of people doing engineering mm. and uh, fairly some amount of people doing medicine. And th these are the two major streams. Other things are not very much uh, encouraged. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so when I completed my high school and I was applying for med schools, mm. uh, I got so the public schools are cheaper when compared to private schools. Mm -hmm. So in the end, uh, you need to there are several uh, rounds of uh, interviews that you have to go through. Um, so the first round of interview I went through and I did not get a MBBS mm -hmm. position. I got a BDS, which is dental, okay. to be a dentist. Uh, and uh, I didn't want to be a dentist. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let me wait for the second round of interviews. Yeah. But then uh, the second round of interviews is late in the fall semester, mm -hmm. by before which all the um, engineering schools have started and remaining med schools have started and my uh, mm. there was peer pressure to start the college soon yeah. so I switched to engineering just because I don't want to lag mm. and um, 
yeah, that's one thing. The time was crunching down for me to start with school. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. so that's how I started engineering instead yeah. of med school. Yeah. And even if I had waited for the second round or third round of interviews, uh, mm. and uh, there, there was thin chances of me getting public school. Mm -hmm. And private schools are expensive and I didn't have the money to yeah. get into private school. So that's why I moved to uh, engineering. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. And uh, yeah, I was, I'm not a big fan of physics. I would rather say physics does not like me. So <laughs> engineering is not my cup of tea, but still uh, I'm good at math and yeah. good at math. Uh, so um, I started on that foundation, with yeah. math foundation. And uh, so I started with engineering. And also my mom and uh, my mom comes from a engineering background yeah. and my dad is a math background yeah and uh, i'm more comfortable with math um mm. so i thought if i have any doubt i could ask my mom so that was the only confidence i had <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me as well I, lo I love asking my mom as yeah, well, as well. Yeah. and i'm curious for you yeah. what has that been who are the who are the heroes in your life Smith? um it depends. It depends on the situation. If I have yeah. any academic challenge, I go to my mom. Mm. And if I have any personal or life challenge, I go to my dad. Yep. Uh, he's more he's more grounded and wise. Yeah. So my dad is more grounded. And uh, so it makes sense to uh, ask him uh, what's the good thing to do. Mm. Uh, and, my, and my mom is very supportive and encouraging. So if I want to do something, big in life or some challenge I want yeah. to take up, I go to my mom, so she's all pushy and things yeah. like that. Hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. And I just see, I see that shaping. I mean, they've shaped you clearly, right? Both yeah, of yeah. your parents yeah. in the way that you see the world, right? Mm -hmm. And I wonder for you as, as a researcher, I look at Colorado State University, mm -hmm. right? Hundreds of millions of dollars invested in the research. Mm -hmm. yes. and I just wonder, like, tell me what that's like, because I'm just picturing you Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Oahu or Kauai with my family in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We saw the enormous waves and we saw the surfers on the front of it. I picture research as that wave, right? That is just moving us as a society. It's mm -hmm. advancing us. And I can't think of a better example in computer science, yeah. right? Where you are literally paving the way for our future technologies. Yeah. Tell me what that's like being at the front of that pack. It's beautiful. I would say I've uh, grown to love research over the years. Uh, yeah. Thanks to both my advisors, my masters and PhD advisors, they are incredible in their own ways. Yeah, um, yeah research is beautiful. It gives you the um, uh, freedom to be creative mm -hmm. and also to uh, uh, use technology and the scientific yeah. methods and your creativity to move forward. That's when yeah. more innovation happens. Hmm. Um, <laughs> CSU is great. They support research to a great extent and yeah. uh, give you the academic freedom to think on your own and mm. uh, act on your own. So in my department, they have been doing that instead of following a rigid model of research and yeah. the practices. The pr professors let the students take the lead. Yeah. So I love that about, about the research methodology and uh, mm. the advising style that's been followed in my department. Yeah. So uh, they, they give that to you. They give yeah. you that sense of yeah, agency you do and autonomy it. to you do it. carry and, it out. Yeah, so, so uh, mm. I, I end up coming up with my own ideas, my own thoughts. So uh, yeah. I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. That's, yeah. That's incredible. So I wonder in your, your journey, part of my, my vision and my mission is I want to be a bridge builder. Mm -hmm. right? I want to bring together people who mm -hmm. might not typically interact. Right. And I think mm -hmm. about the gap between I don't know if you've seen it between undergraduate students, right. obviously grad school, mm -hmm. Ph.D., very different academic tracks, very mm -hmm. different social circles. Right communication techniques, maturity levels, like there's so many different things there. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what is my role? What's our role mm -hmm. in bridging that? How do we bring those two groups together in some way? Do you see that happening or have you seen right. it happen already? Right, I've, I've been a part of um, two things. Yeah. One is in our department, we have something called CSU peer mentoring. Mm. So the grad students mentor the undergrad students. Yeah. And uh, so just on a casual talk, uh, just say, hey, how it's going and just the grad students checking on the undergrad students in a friendly way yeah. so that the undergrad students prepare for graduate school and also they are not intimidated by how right. the grad school change is going to be like. Right, right. Um, that's one thing I've witnessed at CSU. The second thing is um, 
more focused on uh, um, I, I'm, I'm blanking on the word <laughs> it's called the murals multicultural undergraduate um, research uh, arts and leadership symposium yeah. it's focused for um, people of color students of color undergraduate students of color yeah. um, so it's focused on minority but we do not uh, distinguish between other people but just started for minority students yeah. to empower them to uh, focus on research and also to support be supportive of them to come to grad school so what they do in uh, murals is it happens uh, annually in mm. March the last Friday of March uh, I think uh, we have had five or six years of murals so far oh, wow. and I've been a part of um, three of those Wow. And uh, yeah, so. Um, and where are those featured? Is that throughout campus? Throughout campus. It's, it's open to all the undergrad students and even for freshmen. Yeah. We support them to uh, do research. So how the process happens is we send out the uh, uh, invite mm -hmm. around uh, October or November time saying that, hey, students participate. And, uh, and also uh, uh, the faculty who supervise the students in undergrads or who have the students, they encourage them to participate in murals. Yeah. So what murals is look like, um, they come up with some project of their own mm -hmm. or it can be some project they're working in their uh, research group or anything, they can come up with a topic. So what we do as part of the organization committee is we help mm -hmm. them to craft the abstract. We help them to come up with a presentation poster presentation, PowerPoint presentation. So on the day of murals, uh, they present their um, research mm. in the form, in, in a scientific form, like this is my problem, this is my approach, this is the methodology, these are the results they found, and mm. uh, this is our future work. So yeah. we help them craft that kind of scientific uh, uh, methodology. Um, and also they also get to do a poster as well as the PowerPoint. So mm -hmm. this is how uh, this is how things work in an actual scientific conference. Yeah. You submit an abstract, you get the reviews, and if you're selected, you go and present your uh, work and also do a poster. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that we don't do here is the writing part. We don't ask mm. them to write a full paper. We yeah. just ask them to write uh, 250 words of abstract. Mm, I see. So, yeah. And that's, and that's a snapshot of what they want to share with yeah, the world. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so my role in this whole murals organization was twofold. In the first part, I was one of the evaluators. Mm -hmm. So uh, I go and uh, see students present their work and I give yeah. them feedback. Yeah. So I was one of them. And the second uh, and the third year, what I did was uh, I was in the part of the organization committee. Mm -hmm. So I take part in all the organization administrative stuff. Yeah. So it helped me to understand the mission and vision of how things are happening and how they're supportive of the students. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. So in this role, in this role, I gather all the other graduate students who are interested to uh, do the evaluations. Mm -hmm. So I organize uh, the evaluation part. I yeah. collect the abstracts from the graduates, uh, from the undergrads. I give them to graduate students, yeah. collect back their feedback, give them to the undergrads, mm. and then uh, uh, organize the whole. Uh, presentation and PowerPoint uh, 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 scheduling of those things to graduate students. Hey, you go there, you go there and give them positive and uh, uh, constructive feedback so that they're yeah. not intimidated by <laughs> you, but then they're uh, supportive, they feel supported and yeah. uh, encouraged to come to grad school. Yeah. And also, yeah. I love that. I love that because yeah. it's like for, yeah. for us studying in undergrad, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you've been to the airport before <laughs> when you picture like your suitcase is on the conveyor belt and it's going behind to the other wall. I feel like that's what it's like mm -hmm. for some undergrad students, right? Where we, we know of that future. We know that there's opportunities in research, but mm -hmm. for someone like you mm -hmm. who can materialize that and give substance to that mm -hmm. idea of, I want to take my passions mm -hmm. and I want to invest them in research to mm -hmm. have an impact. Mm -hmm. What does that process look like? You mentioned that you mentor mm -hmm. young students yes. through that experience. Yes. What yes. have you seen from their stories and experiences? So, uh, so looking back, like if I were 10 years ago when I started undergrad, mm -hmm. um, I'll be like, hey, yeah, cool. <laughs> I came to undergrad. I'm away from home. I can do whatever I want now. Yeah. So that's, that's all my uh, uh, mentality is. I don't see mm -hmm. the big picture, but I, yeah what do I do after this or how my life is going to be? I don't see the big picture. Mm. But as a grad student, you learn to see the big picture. 
So you take a step back. You take a step back and see the uh, big picture, and uh, yeah. there's a process that's involved in you growing as a person to mm. see the big picture. Yeah. So that's one advantage that the undergrads will have when they interact with the grad students. So the mm. grad students, when they have a big picture, they are able to uh, give the undergrads more insights into uh, what things are. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and if an undergrad who is sincere, or if they want to do anything in their life, and I mm -hmm. think it will be a very good pairing of the undergrad and the uh, grad student yeah. pairing will be really good if they want to learn and improve in life. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I'm curious too, Swetha, for you, in mm -hmm. your experience in research, mm -hmm. I'm sure just in the knowledge base that you have, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to communicate that to the average person that you walk yes. by about what you've experienced, right? And, mm -hmm. and I wonder how we can, how we can disseminate that information from our hundreds of million dollars in research for that to be translated into here's an impact and mm -hmm. a learning, key learnings that we have. Mm -hmm. My question for you, Swetha, is as a researcher, as a PhD student, nearing your dissertation, mm -hmm. do you feel heard? And, and yes. when I say heard in the sense of Yes, you do by mm -hmm. by your professors, by your advisors, mm -hmm. by the university as yes. a whole. Mm -hmm. What's that been like in terms of being feeling heard, uh, knowing that you're heard? It's a, it's certainly a journey. So mm -hmm. uh, when you start undergrad or even grad school for that matter, when you take the coursework, mm -hmm. uh, you are bombarded with a lot of terminologies <laughs> which are abstract. Obviously, yeah. they're abstract in engineering and math and computer science. They're abstract concepts which you may not be able to relate it to everyday life, but uh, through, through practice uh, mm -hmm. and uh, speaking with different audience, connecting with different students yeah. and different uh, people in the walks of life, you, um, and, uh, ask, and them asking you more questions, more feedback from you helps you to relate with everyday life. Yeah. Uh, I would say there were two opportunities at mm -hmm. CSU I see right now. Uh, one is the CSU Speaks, if I'm right. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's organized by the Graduate Student Council. Yeah, of course. And uh, they do this, um, I'm not pretty sure. I think they do it at the uh, New Belgium uh, mm -hmm. uh, Brewery, yep. where uh, graduate students uh, speak about their research to common people That's so incredible. that they dilute what their research is to their common people. So yeah. that's one practice. The other one is uh, my master's thesis advisor. He is um, mm. he is very much into uh, communicating your research to a uh, general audience. Yeah. So he has trained me a lot over the years. Mm. So every day, um, I'm sorry, every week, um, we have a group meeting mm -hmm. uh, where students present their um, students pick up research paper and try to uh, speak in front of the uh, whole research group yeah so perhaps in the semester a student get two or three uh, chances to do that mm. and also we also have this uh, something called elevator pitch okay so we course. speak our research to someone in the elevator we practice this yeah for five minutes so mm. my uh, thesis advisor he gave us this training over the years no. so <laughs> i'm just trying to imagine that five minutes from five minutes, two years of research five minutes, you have to sell your there. research That's to right. a completely uh, diff complete stranger you have That's to do right. that so he gave us the practice over the years and yeah. uh, i think it's it's a it, it's a learned skill mm. you have to learn it yeah what would you say is one of the most meaningful experiences you've had whether it be masters phd as a student, as a mm -hmm. member of this community, what are what are one of the most meaningful experiences? Um, CSU is is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I would say there are so many res resources on campus. Yeah. Uh, I'm not from the United States, mm -hmm. so when I did my masters, I didn't know of several resources that I could use to uh, yeah. uh, empower me or to understand. Uh, uh better and things like that but mm. when i started my phd the initial stage was i was planning to quit phd that's yeah. when i looked at several research uh resources on campus mm -hmm. um and uh, learned about several things and uh, i started coming to the senate yeah uh so uh, ASCSU, ASCSU, student uh, government, yeah and uh all these uh, helped me to be a part of the community, yeah. and uh, that made uh, that certainly made a difference. Mm. Um, yeah. So one is CSU is a great community, and they have wonderful, wonderful on-campus resources. And yeah. uh, the second thing is uh, for research. I love research because I'm able to uh, bring in my creativity along with the uh, technical knowledge that I've studied. So uh, 
I enjoy doing it. It's not like a you know set of scientific methodologies that you have to do. It's, mm. it's kind of boring if you see it that way. Yeah. But I'm able to bring uh, my own self, the person I am, and yeah. uh, my own ideas and things like that into the scientific community. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's something that I love about research. Yeah. So. That's fascinating. I mean, you're weaving, right? You're weaving a, a tapestry of all of those experiences and those, mm -hmm. those. I'm sure you've had late nights of research, right? And into one, into one broad. Like I love that idea of stepping back and seeing mm -hmm. the big picture. And yeah. I yeah. just wonder if you were to imagine there's thirty thousand students behind us here. <laughs> if you had the chance to invite them into something or to share something with them, mm -hmm. what do you think that would be? Or is it the elevator pitch? Is it your? Oh, elevator <laughs> what, What's pitch. that message for them? Um. I would just say enjoy your life. <laughs> yeah. That's what I would say to the students. And um, my graduate school journey was more of understanding myself mm. better. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, helped me to connect myself as a researcher and to bring in more uh, ideas yeah. on the plate. Yeah. To, uh, so I would say to the students, like, just enjoy yourself and be yourself. And uh, yeah. I think that's, that's what matters the most because when you are yourself and uh, yeah. when you connect with yourself, yeah. you'll be able to bring the best you want. Yeah. And not just research, anything you do in your life. I think, yeah, yeah being yeah. yourself is more important. Mm. Yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. Yes, I love that. So I'm trying to picture for you, if you can remember when you were in high school, first year of high school. First year of high school. You okay. were in Chennai, you said, right? Yes. In India. Uh -huh. What would you say if you had five minutes to go back and talk with Swetha when she was 14 years old? <laughs> but what would you tell her about the journey ahead? Uh, I would say just go with the flow um, yeah. because there were several challenges during my master's program. Mm -hmm. During four and a half years of master's, it's not easy seeing all your peers graduate and uh, uh, earn good uh, salary and be settled in life and uh, yeah. you're doing here for four and a half years hey it's more than what a graduate uh, undergrad student would do and you're still my, studying while my, there. i have a younger brother yeah and uh, he and me he started undergrad the same time i started graduate school mm. and he finished his uh, undergrad in three and a half years oh well <laughs> i took four and a half years to graduate from the master's program so that's a commitment right the time that you yeah, put in is yeah yeah, I was I was working hard and I was persevering at it. But yeah, yeah. so um, I would just say just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I would say. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So thinking back, that's what I would say. Do, do not resist the challenge or do not resist the fight yeah. that you are in. Just go with the flow and uh, yeah. you should you will surely make it. Yeah. <laughs> so Sweat, I'm curious for for me and for obviously our relationship and how can how can i as a friend as a fellow student mm -hmm. as a member of this community as a student leader what can i do to support you mm -hmm. in everything that you've just mentioned in your journey as a student and as a part of this community how can i support you mm -hmm. the one thing uh, um i see that was not uh obvious was the diversity and inclusion yeah. i don't want to go more into diversity part it's yeah. more about the language people use mm. i wish it was uh, it had more inclusive language yeah and uh, mm. and also to uh, understand people from coming from different walks of life and yeah. not jumping into conclusions and not yeah. assuming things and to uh, to uh, bring awareness to students faculty and to everyone to ask questions to understand yeah. the person from where they're coming from and what their background is and also to be more inclusive of them yeah. uh, without assuming things or jumping into conclusions that that's yeah. something that i would um, encourage you as yeah. a student body leader to uh, focus on to uh, yeah. yeah i think that's something uh, I've learned over the years, I, I didn't have the skill. I didn't have the skill. Graduate school is really good. They provide this uh, professional development series every year. So once a week, they have a topic. Uh, they, do, they conduct workshops. And that's when I learned all the different uh, um, things that's going on. One is uh, mentor, men mentee relationship. Um, and the next thing is uh, unconscious bias. That's a very good workshop. And, uh, I'm sure whoever attended it would have uh, 
appreciated what was happening there. Um, yeah. It's about our own assumptions and unconscious bias that we have mm. in, in our mind that is uh, stopping few students or stopping uh, other people or even ourselves from reaching our goals. Yeah. So the more uh, training uh, and awareness one has, uh, I think uh, we can bridge the gap. Um, yeah. yeah, that's, that's something. Powerful. Aware, the more knowledge, the more awareness, the about more empathy the, we have. That's yeah. what builds that bridge. About the bias, that unconscious bias that we have and the assumptions that we have that can hinder yeah. someone's uh, progress. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. That's something that I've learned. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I love that because that's, we're seeing the best in the students on mm -hmm. our campus. We're seeing mm -hmm. them for, for everything that they are not, like you said, not assuming, right? But mm -hmm. but having a genuine curiosity to yes. learn and to know. Uh -huh. And I just want you to know, Swet, that your voice and your story mm -hmm. and your experiences and your your journey through grad school and PhD, it all matters. And, mm -hmm. and I want to help draw that out. And, and I hope this was a snapshot for our audience today. <laughs> but I really I thank you for coming. And, and yeah, I thank, thank you, you for, for having me. Yeah, thank you for hearing me out. Yeah, appreciate that. So feel free if you want to give a wave to the cameras and we'll, <laughs> we'll call it. This has been Sweat Thou Christian, uh, Christian. Storytelling Series. Uh -huh. <laughs>